This is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com, and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. Welcome to our flower series. In this video, we'll be piping buttercream magnolias. It's broken down into steps, so you can skip ahead, rewind, and rewatch as desired. Now, let's make the color for our buttercream magnolias. We're gonna use white for the petals, so you wanna have some additional white beyond what we're gonna use to make the yellow for our centers, and we're using all American-style buttercream. So we've got a little in the bowl here, and we're gonna use two liquid gel colors to create our yellow. Some Buckeye Brown, and some Lemon Yellow. And I don't need a very dark color, so I just have a little bit of each squeezed out onto the lid of my tray, and I'm gonna start with my yellow, and do some nice big specks, probably like three or four of that lemon. And I'm just gonna do a tiny one on that brown. I want that kind of like harvest gold color for my yellow. And so adding just a little bit of brown will take it into that territory. You wanna go light with the brown at first because it's easy to always add a touch more if you want. It's really hard to backtrack. And you can go from being a nice, beautiful golden yellow to being a very light brown really quickly. So we wanna keep it in the yellow range, but just give it a little bit of that kind of harvest gold vibe. And I like the intensity we've got on the yellow. I just wanna add a tiny touch more of that brown. And I think that should put us right where we want to be. You can see down in the bowl where the shadows are. It's a nice indication of where your color will end up once it develops. So I have a nice kind of soft, let's say kind of like wheat yellow color, and that's perfect. It's going to be a beautiful center in the middle of our magnolias. We're going to use three bags to create this flower. Two, we have directly fitted with our tip that we're using our white in, and one we're using a coupler with. Our first bag of white is fitted with a number 125 tip. So this is a large, right? One of those oversized straight petal tips. The second is a 123. This is a large curved petal tip that's also fitted directly in the bag. Our third bag is for our yellow, and we're using it with two tips. The first is a number eight tip. You can also use a number 10 if you don't have an eight. The second is a number one tip. So any small round tip will do. So number one or number two. Now we're gonna review the techniques we're gonna to use to create our magnolia blossoms. And there's several petals. The first one we're gonna do with our 125, so that's that straight large opening, and it's gonna be diamond shaped. <clears throat> and for this, we're gonna be kind of in that lay flat position. The fat end of the tip is gonna to be touching the surface, and we wanna have the bag kind of back end off towards three o'clock. And we wanna think about starting at the center and sliding out along an angle, then we rotate our tip, pull it back towards the close. So you essentially want to trace a diamond shape with the opening of this tip uh, to create these petals. And I'm gonna rotate my tray a little bit while I work just to, to mimic how we're gonna use our flower nail. But you can see doing that creates these almost diamond shaped petals that give us that nice little point that we want on some of those bottom petals for our magnolia. Next, we're gonna do some of what I call just small little support fans. Our petals are gonna have some space in between them and we're gonna need some support on the bottom. So we just wanna pull kind of a slight little wedge or fan shape. We're gonna do this on our nail so it'll be a little broader on the outside edge. And that's basically so we have a nice kind of flat surface area. All of our petals are connected underneath and you won't even see this. For our next petal, we're gonna use our second bag of white that has our 123 tip on it. And we're gonna do these kind of cupped teardrop 
shaped petals. It's going to be just like a regular teardrop shaped petal in terms of how we're going to pull it on the nail, except that we're using this curved tip. So it's going to give the petal a nice little cupped shape. So fat end is going to be towards the center and touching the surface. Skinny end is going to be rocked up. The more you rock it up, the more cupped your petal will be. Bag is gonna be kind of flat position, back end off towards three o'clock. And we're just gonna pull out nice soft motion, rotate and pull back. And you can see it flares up the edge of that petal. So the more you rock it up, the more flared it's gonna be. And that's gonna give us a nice effect and give our flowers some depth. Next, we're gonna make some upright teardrop shaped petals. And for these, we're gonna hold the bag at 45 degrees. So we've been kind of holding it flat up until now. We're gonna rock that back end up a little bit and we're gonna kind of hold it so that the back end is towards our shoulder. So I'm a right-handed, it's going towards my right shoulder. And to do these, instead of pulling out, we're actually gonna go up. So think about drawing a little arc shape. And if you do it nice and small and quick, you'll get a little kind of upright petal. This will be easier to do when we're actually working on our nail and we have other petals already piped because it'll give these some support. But you can see you have these petals that have a really nice little bit of height to them and they're cupped. And so these are gonna make some really great little petals towards the center of our flowers. Next, let's talk about the centers. We're gonna do two things. We're gonna create a mound. You can use either a number 10 or number eight. We're using a number eight, so it's a little more petite. And then we're gonna create some spikes with a number one. So the first thing we wanna do for our little mound is we wanna make it nice and kind of elongated and tall. So we're gonna get a nice fat base on there. So up off the surface, squeeze until you reach that full kind of width and then just pull up nice and slow. When you wanna end it, you can pull away quickly. And you can see that makes a nice little sturdy pillar for us to pipe some spikes on. For our spikes, we wanna do just like we did for a mound, but just smaller. So we've got a nice little one tip on there. We're gonna hold it just above the surface so that frosting connects. And then we're gonna pull away while we're still squeezing. And that's gonna give us little teeny tiny spikes. Now let's review how we're gonna take the techniques we just practiced and combine them to make our magnolia flowers. So the first thing we're gonna do is grab our bag of white with our 125. We're going to set ourselves up to pipe those three bottom diamond shaped petals. You wanna make sure they're roughly equidistance. So you can always mark your parchment paper with a little bit of Sharpie first to kind of help yourself out if you're having trouble visualizing it. Once we get those three big diamond shaped petals on there, we're then gonna take that same tip and just pipe one of those little wedge shaped fan supports in between each one. That gives us the basis for our next petals. It gives them a little support and it also connects that whole bottom piece together to give you a nice stable flower that's easy to move later. So on top of those little support fans, we're gonna do three of our cupped teardrop shaped petals. So we're gonna just pull them out nice, long, and flat. If you can get kind of an oblong shape to them, that's great. If they come out a little more teardrop shape and rounded, that's fine too. But that's always kind of our goal with these flowers. Magnolias have kind of long petals there and it looks really beautiful and kind of has a lot of depth and dimension to it. So we wanna go for a nice oblong shape, but if it's just a little bit rounded, that's fine too. Next, we're gonna take that same bag, our 123, that we just did our cupped petals with, and we're gonna do some upright ones. So again, these are gonna be offset as well. So you're gonna line these upright cupped petals right up with those diamond shaped ones and do them really nice, small and petite between um, your kind of uh, teardrop shaped ones. So we just wanna do three of those as well. And that's gonna give us a nice little center there. We'll have a void in the middle to do uh, the center of our flower. So we'll pipe a cone and then cover it with some of those cute little hairy spikes with our number one tip. And that'll give us our completed magnolia flower. So we wanna do those diamond shaped ones and then switch to our 123 to do first our teardrop shaped cup ones and then our upright ones. And that's gonna give us a beautiful flower that's really dynamic and wonderful. To get ready, 
I went ahead and marked my parchment paper in thirds with my Sharpie. And then as you can see, I flipped it over so that marker is on the underneath and I've attached it with a little bit of buttercream. And that allows you to see your lines and give yourself a nice little guide. And I'm working on my three inch nail. So a nice big flower nail for this one, it's a big flower. We're gonna start by piping our three diamond shaped petals. We're using our 125 tip, fat end towards the center, skinny end out. And we're just gonna slowly draw that nice diamond shape to create those petals. We wanna do them kind of roughly equidistance apart. I don't know if I drew my lines perfectly, but we wanna just get them on there with roughly equal spacing between each one. You don't wanna draw them too fat or big because you'll leave a big void in the center of the petals. It's okay if there's a little bit, the other petals will cover that up, but we don't want it to be too big. I'm just gonna get my third one on there. There we go. So you can see I've got my three diamond shaped petals on my nail. Next, we wanna pipe our little support fans. So just in between each petal, a nice little wedge, just right there, back end at the center, just so that there's something in between each petal connecting them together. Now we're ready to grab our bag with our 123 tip. We're gonna start that in towards the center, skinny end rocked up so we get nice cup shaped petals and we're gonna draw teardrop shaped petals that are on top of those little support fans. So we wanna do nice oblong shape, pull out nice, let it flop over the edge of that support and that's gonna give you a great shape to those petals. We're gonna do three of those and they'll be offset from our first diamond shaped petals. And I like to start just a little bit away from the center, just to give myself a little gap, a little room in the middle and also in between. Now we're gonna use that bag with our 123 to do our little upright petals. And for this, I want the bag at 45 degrees, back ends at three o'clock again. And we're just gonna go in between our teardrop shaped ones and pull up to give ourselves a little petal. So just really cute, really tiny, right there in between each one. And this will kind of help enclose our center and give us a nice little void there to pipe our mound in the middle. And you can see the flower from the side already has a lot of depth and dimension to them and it's got a very magnolia vibe to it. The first step for our center is to pipe that big mound. I've got my number eight on my bag and I'm holding it straight up and down just above the surface, squeeze a nice full dot, let it connect and then pull up slowly until you're ready to finish it. To finish our flowers, we've changed the tip on our yellow to number one, and we're just gonna pipe those beautiful little spikes all the way around. And depending on how you want your magnolias to look, you can go all over the cone, it'll take a little more time, and that's what I'm doing now. Or you can just kind of cover the top, kind of third of it. That's really up to you. If you want some variety on your magnolias, you can also vary up the color of the cone and the spikes from pinks to greens, just to give them a little bit of a different vibe. You can see it makes really quick work of it. Just add some nice frilly little spikes there. They don't have to be exact or perfect. It's just gonna give that cone some texture and some detail to add some depth and interest to these beautiful flowers. If you enjoyed this flower, try checking out some of our other videos in our flower series. If this one was a little too advanced for you yet, try something along the lines of our basic rose or daisy. If you want more of a challenge, try checking out our heirloom rose as well. 
If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.